All right. So I'm gonna do a quick inspection. Sorry about the wind. Doing a quick inspection on this unit. I installed this unit probably about a year ago and a guy about to sell the house, as you can see. So he want me to come and do an inspection on it. Just so he can have some paperwork. He says cool and fine. Ha hasn't had any problems with it, you know, since it's been installed. So I'm gonna use the uh, Measure Quick app today. Yeah, to bear with me, I only used it a couple times. I've been playing with it. Seems like a nice little setup though. Then I'm gonna try to, so just a quick tip. This is another reason I like warranty company because I get a lot of work. He don't have a warranty no more. Uh, of course, since he's selling the house, but that's how you can still kind of market and get more work even with the warranty companies. Because he also found a, a new house and he wanted me to come and inspect that. So that's kind of like free marketing and free advertisement with the one, you know, through warranty. I'm gonna turn all these on. I need to label these. So I'm gonna, like I said, I'm just gonna turn everything on. Get them dialed in. All right, so we're gonna go to the measure quick, close. So everything zeroed out. This 410A. All right, so we'll hook up the suction line first. Got standing pressure 181 psi. Oh, you can see that. So I think this measure quick good, so I can kind of like give him, give him a report. You can show the homeowner or the inspector. All right. Make sure this is on the liquid line. Yep. This suction line. I think when it beeped, that means it's actually reading. So we'll take this on the inside and put the supply and the return. They use the an infrared gun. Uh, it, was, it was yellow, and yeah, it was just some kind of yeah. Like, just, you let it run the unit run for a while, mm -hmm. and then he, you know, he went out there and pointed. Yeah, I mean they're pretty accurate, but these are more accurate here. Uh, yeah, because the infrared kind of like read the surface, what they'll be pointing to. Yeah. So, but if they point in the ductwork, I mean plus or minus one or two degrees, it's fine though. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, we still had an inspection of the floor, okay? Mm -hmm. There was a free inspection of this house. Uh huh. I had yet to see a single inspection of the floor. Oh, wow. Probably I'll just stop asking my realtor because he's just a dude that's useless. <laughs> the guy I've known for a few years, I was, mm -hmm. he helped me out back when I sold my last house five years ago. I was going through my divorce. Mm -hmm. He helped me out a lot, so I was like, hey, look, I'm going to use him. He's a good guy. He seems successful. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah, he should at least beg get get you to report. The first two people that put offers on my house were investors. Mm -hmm. Came in, full price offer, um, went under contract. They had a house inspected, and then they they canceled. Uh -huh. they, no excuse other than too many issues. So mm -hmm. I was like, I told my realtor, I said I want to see the inspection report. They said two of them canceled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's before you got the roof done and all that? I got that roof, AC, breaker box, everything. Mm -hmm. So I contacted a guy, had him come in, we did a walkthrough inspection. I was like, there's nothing wrong with this house. Mm -hmm. said, there's no, absolutely nothing. You check the foundation, there's nothing. Yeah. So within a couple of days, got to come back on the market a couple of days later, full, actually, offered above asking price. Mm. It's already, it's in the contract stage, so we're just waiting to okay. get this stuff done. Yeah, what, what you selling it for? I listed it at 185. Oh, 185, okay. So, the other two people, that's what they came in at 185. I was like, hey, that's better than what I was saying. Mm -hmm. This last time yeah. came in at 189. Oh, yeah. So, I, I'm going to have to... Yeah, it sounds like he won. Is he an investor or he... Uh, no, or he this is an actual full buyer. Okay, so... Thank God, because those investors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he, he, he won it then. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, the only issue, I mean, the AC, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. they said the stove was stripping the breaker, which I don't understand. So I got to, after you, this afternoon, I got an AC electrical guy down me. They don't have to check the stove. Mm -hmm. You got an electrical guy or an appliance guy coming out and take? I did electrical. I wasn't sure which one to do first. Uh -huh. um, they said it was stripping the breaker when the oven was on or the broiler. That never happened for years. That's a new breaker box. I did an electrician first. Yeah. See what he says. Then I'll have to get an appliance guy. Mm -hmm. But the, the hot water heater has to have a valve, TV valve put on it. Okay. And then it turns out there's no line on the outside. Mm. That, it never existed. That should have been caught with all of the house. Yeah. Relief valve. Yeah, mm -hmm. but there's no actual physical line in case it blows. Right. Nothing to spit outside. So yeah. That's probably going to cost me a bit of money. Yeah. What, uh, what year this house was built? 78. 78? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah, 780 probably wasn't cold, you know, to put it in. Yeah. And mm -hmm. so, so the thing, the guy, the plumber came out on Saturday morning. He said, man, I can do it. He said, I can do it one way. Where it's not the code, but it'll work. Because mm -hmm. there's already a line, he's got to just tie it to that one. Come out right at the bottom, be all good. They may not want that. Yeah, nah, if yeah. They want the code, he's got to run the line down the, through the soffit, down the side of the house, mm -hmm. back of the house. Yeah. So you can have a physical pipe. Yeah, might well do it right the first time. Cause, yeah, yeah, I'm going to give him the options. He's going to send me a quote. Okay. So I'm going give, to give him the options. Yeah. Yeah, because the relief valve, though, you need a separate. That's what this is like, yeah. When I got the house inspected in 17, mm -hmm. they should have found that. Yeah. The drain man's all busted up. Mm -hmm. They said if it leaks, it's coming right through the roof. Yeah. 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 They said that should have been replaced three years ago. Yeah. So, uh, All right, man. Yeah. Hope oh, yeah. you getting there, though. I, I'm getting there, man. I'm ready. Yeah. I think if you were paying two mortgages, it's been Yeah. I bet. All right, so this is what we got here. Super heat, suction line out reading, temperature. 
sandy copper lines. Make sure I get a good read now here. Cause it seems like it's not reading so far. So the temperature out, outside about 70 something degrees. This is a 14 sear unit. Let's change that value. Like I said, I'm not that familiar with this measure quick. I'm trying to learn it, but. I really start rolling this out next year. I like it so far though. But let me sand these copper lines down. I think when it beeped that mean it has a connection. Alright. See saturation 43 degrees. Subcooling is 23 kind of high. I think it's a uh, fixed orifice in there. Superheat 33. That's high. So my design target superheat should be 12 degrees. See, they making it super easy. My current value is 33. Say so super heat. First verify that the suction line probe is properly connected and mapped. High super heat is typically not a singular symptom and is caused when the evaporator is starved under field. This can be a result of a low refrigerant charge, charge migration to the condenser or excessive super heat gain in the suction line as it travels through a hot location like an attic. High superheat can also be caused by a plug dryer, a clogged TXV inlet, partial restriction at the TXV or a loss of or partial, partial loss of pressure in the power head of the TXV. Y'all can see that. Let's see the subcooling. High subcooling excessive occurs when the condenser is flooded and it's typically an indication of refrigerant overcharge or refrigerant backing up in the condenser. High subcool is typically not a singular problem and it occurs with either low or high pressure depending on the severity and nature of the problem. Verify the condenser is clean prior to adjusting refrigerant charge on high efficiency system. A dirty condenser can be drive, drive up the condensing pressure while still cooling the liquid line ambient mimicking and overcharge all right so let's see here like I say it's been uh, da, da, da. let's check out uh, in the house So with turn 70, supply air is 53. See, we're in the green on the supply drive bulb. So all of these temperatures in the house, we're in the green. So my supply is 53, my return is 70. So that's by what, 17 degree temperature difference. So it's cool and good. Let's go back outside, check the key pressures. Yeah, so since I got a 17 degree uh, temperature difference in the uh, I mean, it's cool and fine. Like I said, they have no problem. They had no problem. They just need a uh, a report from a 
uh, qualified company showing that it's working fine but I'm not gonna adjust no charges uh, adjust anything like I say maybe slightly overcharged but I don't think I'm gonna make any adjustments So I'll take a screenshot of that, take a screenshot of this. Like I said, I haven't messed with this too much. I really don't know how to uh, send a report via email yet. Um, like I said, it made my second time playing with this measure quick. So if anybody leave a comment below on uh a good tutorial on this to find out how do I send send reports. Let's go to results. Quick test project. Guess I put the home on a name here or address. Galloway equipment. I'm just gonna put Goodman. Maybe I can change the location. I'm going to results and uh, it, it's showing that the, the, it's showing the last property that, that I was messing with it on. I'm gonna take a picture, use that photo, see if I can give me a model number. GXX. showing the uh, I did a Linux unit with this thing last week and it's still showing the information on their unit S48 1 A to the serial number I can see what this uh, measure quick with these field piece pro can make life a whole lot easier. I'm more like the old school. When I first started this, I didn't get uh, digital probes or anything. And this is my first uh, set of wireless, but I didn't get digital probes. I, I, I was in HV, I think maybe seven years. But I used to always be like, you know, you need to learn the analog part of it. But, but uh, I would tell a technician, if y'all just starting out in HVAC, skip over the analog, go with the digital, you know, with the thermometer, uh, the therm um, and the digital. So they, they can, you don't really have to waste time uh, collecting superheat sub cooling, let it do it for you. Cause almost like back in the day, uh, they used to tell you to do the steps of multiplication or division. But if you got a calculator, you can get the answer right in and there. Just go, you know. But we got calculators on our phone these days. It's really no sense of trying to calculate everything yourself. All right. So this here. I need to learn how to email this here to the homeowner. It still got my notes from that other unit. Let's 
say good, man. That unit had two systems. I'm gonna say entire home. See, now I gotta redo the model, man. I'm gonna put my note. GXX. Also, to the people that already got this uh, Measure Quick application, do y'all think it's worth uh, getting the field piece probes? I mean, the uh, thing called a redfish meter to hook up to them. Point two on my amps. Uh, like I say, do y'all think it's worth getting the uh, the redfish meter? They can hook up wireless to, to here also. I know that thing kind of expensive. So on my airflow entropy. Temperature difference, see 17 degrees. Oh, they look good. So I'm taking screenshots just in case I lose all this. That's the main thing they want to see right here for this inspection, they say, to make sure the uh, temperature is within target. I think about 70, 75 degrees out here today, a little overcast. But I got. 9.3 and this thing so it's running great so uh i already been in the attic everything look good up there so, so for my channel this introduction to the field piece wireless probes and the measure quick went on ahead and, and got it like i said i like it so far i know it's a lot of things that i need to learn about it but just hooking it up, everything seemed easy. As soon as I turned everything on, it connected right away. So. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna speak with the homeowner to see how I can get this information from here to the homeowner. Then I write up a report also.